Now, I used to only dodge and burn in Photoshop, and the thought of doing anything like that in Lightroom, I just shut out of my mind because Photoshop clearly had the superior tools for the job. That is until I found out about these two techniques in Lightroom that totally changed the way you dodge and burn. In my opinion, these two techniques might make Lightroom the superior option for dodging and burning, and we're gonna dive into everything you need to know about this process. My name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and today we're going to talk all about dodging and burning in Lightroom and how to create your very own dodge and burn brush using the adjustment brush. So clicking here on our adjustment brush, you can then go and adjust any of the settings that you would like so then you can paint those adjustments onto your photo. And then of course you have all of your brush settings down here. So let's say I wanted to add a brightening adjustment. I could just click and drag the exposure slider up like this and then I can go and paint over the areas I want to brighten on my photo. Now as you can see this doesn't look particularly good and that's because it doesn't really blend very well into our photo and that's sort of the advantage of dodging and burning because you can blend these highlight and shadow adjustments a little bit nicer into your photo than just a broad general brush stroke. So I'm going to delete this brush stroke example and we're going to go and create a variety of different brush strokes to give you an idea of how to create a dodge and burn brush here in Lightroom. So by default, if I go and make an adjustment like so, I'll press O on my keyboard to view that, you can see that I have a fully visible red highlight on my image. And that red highlight that you see is the brush stroke. So that is with a 100% feather, meaning the soft edges, and then the flow and density is at 100%, so everything is super visible. Now check this out, if I go and drag down the flow, let's say to 50, and then I go and bring down the density to 50 as well. Now let's go and create another brush stroke with the exact same brush size. I'm gonna click and drag out like so, and notice how you almost can't even see that brush stroke. I can go and do that on the sky just to give you a bit of a better example you almost can't see the brushstroke. It's so lightly painted on there. But if I go and paint over that same area over and over, it gradually gets darker. I could even do it more in one particular area than another. So for example, you can see how I added more here and here than in the middle. And that is because of our flow and density adjustment. With a lower value in these two settings, the way your adjustments are applied onto your photo are a little bit less aggressive than they are when the flow and density is at 100%. And so by bringing these two sliders down, you basically create a dodge and burn adjustment because you can go and just paint very light faint adjustments in certain areas. And if you want it to look more intense, you can just continue to paint over one specific area, as you can see right here. So understanding how these brush strokes work is really important to better visualize what's going on with our dodging and burning adjustments. But the problem here is that we just edited these particular brush settings, but it'd be kind of annoying to have to do this every single time because you don't always want to have a slightly transparent brush adjustment like this. This only really works best when you're wanting to dodge and burn. So I'll delete this adjustment and we want to go and create a brush like this, but something that doesn't get in the way of our regular work. And that's where the A and B brush comes into play. So by clicking on the B brush, I can adjust these sliders as I wish. And if I go back to the A brush, I have completely different settings. And that's because you can basically have two different brushes ready to go at all times. The only thing to remember about this is that the density does not change between the two brushes. So for example, if I'm in brush A and I set this to 70, and then I go to brush B, the density will stay the same. So that is something that you have to remember. However, the flow and feather are something that can be customized to your specific brush. So for dodging and burning, I usually like to keep the feather at 100 just so it's nice and soft. And then for the flow, I'll bring that down to around 50 like so. Now for the density, I like to have it relatively transparent. So I like to favor a lighter density. So then I have the option just to paint over more if I wish. So dragging this down to 50, just like before, we now have our very very own dodging and burning brush saved here with brush B. So now let's go and actually apply some dodging and burning effects. So clicking first on the exposure adjustment, let's go and apply some brightening or dodging effects. Dragging up on the exposure slider like so, I'll go and paint over some areas on my photo that I wish to brighten, aka dodge. 
Now the thing that's so nice about doing this in Lightroom is that unlike in Photoshop, if you make an adjustment that you're like, oh wow, that looks way too bright, you pretty much have to just undo the brush strokes that you just created. But since this adjustment is actually on a mask and not actually applied onto the photo, we can just go and adjust the exposure like so. So you can totally refine your dodging or burning adjustments on the fly after you create them. So just by dragging that exposure slider down, I've totally changed the effect of those particular adjustments. Now, if I wanted something to appear more bright, again, I can just paint over that one specific area over and over until that mask becomes more dense. The same thing will apply when we go and do the burning adjustments as well. So I'm just gonna go through my image here quickly to add some brightening effects throughout the photo on any key points in the image. But since we have a nice low density and a low flow, all of our adjustments are blending really nicely into the photo and it doesn't look too overwhelming like a standard adjustment brush might. So now let's go and create a burning brush, clicking on the new option and drag the exposure slider to a negative value like so. And then I'll go and paint over the areas that I want to darken this time. So I'm gonna paint over all of these areas that I want to add some contrast in and it just adds a really nice look to our photo to make those areas that we just dodged pop a lot more in the image. And now that looks pretty good to me. So let's go and turn that adjustment on and off. This is our dodge and burning adjustments. Look how nicely that blends into our photo. Now to take this one step further, as you can see with the darkening adjustments, maybe it looks a little bit too intense for you. And that's where you can use range masks and the luminance range mask in particular to help blend these adjustments. Now I talk all about range masks and how they work in another tutorial that you can find up in the corner right now, but I'm just going to give you the cliff notes for it in this video here. Basically what this does is you can sample any exposure range in your photo to refine your mask to those areas. So by clicking on this eyedropper tool here, I'll click on that and then let's go and sample one of these darker areas in the mountains. I'll go and click right here. Look how my adjustment suddenly changed a little. If I go and click somewhere else, it's gonna change a bit more as well. If I go and click down here, it changes once again. So what we're doing is by sampling an exposure range, we're limiting where our specific brush adjustments can take place. In this case, this is our burning adjustment. So we're limiting which dark areas of the photo it can actually affect. Now, currently it's only affecting the midtones to the highlights, but if I only wanted to darken, say the shadows in my image, I could just drag this over like so. And now it's only darkening those shadowed areas. If I press O on my keyboard to view that mask, you can see how limited our burning adjustments are all because of our luminance range mask. So if I drag that up, you can see how things start to come back into play there. But then when I drag it down, it starts to limit it and blends our adjustment even better. The same thing will apply with our other adjustments. So placing our sample option back in its home, I'll click on our dodging adjustment like so, and then I'll go and set the range mask once again to luminance. This time I'll go and sample somewhere on the rock here and notice how much our dodging effects were just refined. Now I can press O on my keyboard, put our eyedropper tool back. And then once this is refined, this luminance value is set. It's not gonna change. So I can go and paint around my image pretty freely and it's only going to affect this particular exposure range. So that way you can really just affect the brightest parts of your photo that you want and not have to worry about any of the shadows. Now this is something that's a little bit harder to do in Photoshop. And so the ease and simplicity of this is why I'm starting to really like using dodging and burning in Lightroom instead of Photoshop. By adjusting the flow and density of your brushes, saving it as a different brush preset in the B brush option, and then using your luminance range masks all together to refine where your dodging and burning adjustments take place. It's really the ultimate way of adding some dodge and burn effects into your photos. Now, if you haven't already done so, then make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with more Lightroom and photo editing tutorials just like today. I see that 88% of you who have yet to do so. So I think now is the time. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.